right, here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today we are joined with one of our really favorite people in the city here, Guy Levique. And Guy is actually is a part of the Canada Business Association and also a vice president or associate vice president with the uh, University of Ottawa. Correct. So tell us a little bit more about the University of Ottawa. I just wanted to kind of know a little bit more about your role, let the audience know bit about your role, and then we'll dig into the Canada Business Association, if you don't mind. Sure. Thanks, Fatty. So yeah, I've got the luxury or the uh, the blessing of wearing many hats in my professional career. And currently, I'm the Associate Vice President uh, for Innovation Partnerships and Entrepreneurship at the University of Ottawa. So I get to straddle the uh, academia world the governmental world and the private sector world. So I, I kind of have uh, the ability to build bridges across uh, a number of different sectors mm -hmm. and, and bring people together to, uh, you know, tackle some of the, the, the tough societal challenges that we have, work on commercialization and getting uh, our students, our faculty members interested and kind of inspired about starting their own ventures. So University of Ottawa is a top 10 university in the country. It's top 100, 100 in the world. Uh, we've got a, a fantastic research and innovation enterprise. One of the uh, key signature events that's going to happen uh, just next week is we're doing a, an official groundbreaking on what's called the Advanced Medical Research Center. Oh, wow. And so that's a transformational generational investment by the university to help uh, build out and uh, increase our capacity applied research and research uh, in the medical life sciences field. So that's one uh, one event that's going to happen next week. I've also, just a few weeks ago, the Auto Business Journal, you would have seen that uh, we celebrated the fifth year anniversary of the Ottawa uh, University of Ottawa's campus in Canada North. So I'll talk a little bit about the linkages there and yeah, why I, I, yeah. I wear those multiple hats. And that's kind of where I want to kind of go just to get a, get a bit of an understanding of the Canada Business, Canada North Business Association. What's the mandate for that organization? Yeah, Fatty. Well, the mandate is, you know, Ottawa has 18 business improvement areas, all there with their very different kind of unique composition of membership. And so with Canada North, the business association started in late 2012. So we've almost 12 years old and we were created really because there's no other place like Canada North in all of the country in terms of the density, the critical mass, the composition of high-tech companies in a very small concentrated ge geographic yeah. area. So the Canada North Business Association was really born out of the need to represent membership at all levels of government. So we talk with the city on a regular basis. We talk with the province. We talk with the federal government to let them know about the economic powerhouse that the Canada North region is. Very small. It's you know about six square kilometers and it's got over 540 members. More than 400 of those are high-tech companies. Yeah. And so when I talk about an economic powerhouse, powerhouse, it generates anywhere between 13 and $14 billion a year in gross domestic product. So a really significant portion of uh, high tech uh, success for the country, for the region and, and, and for Ottawa really happens in Canada North. So the Business Association is there to represent membership, to advocate and to serve its members so that we continue to uh, raise the profile of our companies, big and small, in the park so that uh, Canada North is uh, recognized as Canada's largest technology park. And I remember I, I used to work in the high sector, high tech sector for the last 10 years or so. And I remember using the chat with uh, Jenna Suds, who's now an MP. And minister. And a minister as well, too. And then so much to learn about that section. Like you said, it's only about six square kilometer with so many businesses, so many different areas of opportunities, if you will, from, from the high tech uh, side of things. What I wanted to kind of understand a little bit as, a, you know, you're, yourself, you've been a, a board member for quite some time and now the chair of the board of directors uh, with the Canada North. Tell me a little bit more about what you guys do differently than other boards out there. Yeah, so that's a great question, Fadi, because because of the, the makeup of uh, our business improvement area, our advocacy see in our representation, our, our activities are, are much different than than other uh, business improvement areas in, in the region. So really our job, if you look at uh, our uh, strategic roadmap that we just released at the end of March, which is called Building Together to 2030, what we're trying to really do for the last few years is to really build a sense of community within the technology park. You know, there's 33,000 or so employees in the park, but it, it's a park, it's a technology industrial park. Most of the people who come to the park drive in or commute in and commute out every day. And really what we're focusing on over the next decade is really building a sense of community and kind of transforming the park into a community. Talent, technology, and community are the three pillars that help kind of shape the activities, the initiatives that we take on uh, as a business association. So our job is really to connect people, connect companies, 
uh, and to connect uh, groups who have similar interests or groups, more importantly, that, that can help each other. One of the things that we always say in Ottawa is that, yes, there might be one degree of separation. If I don't know you, we have somebody or a friend in common. But when we bring people together at events, whether they're networking events or workshops or conferences, there are two things we always hear. One is, I didn't know you were here. I didn't know you did that. And the second thing we hear is, oh, I think I can help you with. And so if we are successful as a business association in promoting those types of connections and linkages, then we will have done our job. Mm -hmm. And that's really the reason why we initiated and created or had this dream of creating something called Hub 350 uh, almost three years ago, which was really a meeting, convening place, a nexus where people gather, exchange, get to know one another and continue to build that fabric of community that we want. Now, is that sort of like a networking event or is that more of a an ongoing sort of meetup area. Yeah, so Hub350 is a space. Uh, it's in actually in, in one of the founding companies of Canada North, Mitel. Used to used to be the, the anchor. It's a building that Mitel built uh, several, several years ago. And it really is a meeting place. So there's a, a number of hoteling uh, spaces, hot desking, conference rooms. There's the RBCX financial quarter, which mm -hmm. is the lounge where we have the majority of our, of our events. So in any given year, we have between uh, eight and 12,000 people who will come in to uh, hold events. Sometimes it's groups who are coming in to do a strategic uh, retreat uh, offsite and use, use our spaces. Uh, sometimes it's how do I get financing for my company uh, session? So we have a very a broad mix of, of events that are happening. We had a fantastically attended event at the end of February for Black History Month, where we brought uh, a number of very uh, successful local entrepreneurs and business people uh, to share their success and their stories about uh, being Black entrepreneurs and Black uh, leaders. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the community. Now, if I were to ask you to possibly do like a 30 second sort of advertising for Hub 350, what would the message be? I'll, I'll summarize what I said. Hub 350 is your place where you get to meet colleagues, friends and that are old and new to uh, help build out your network and help build out the ability for you and your company to promote yourselves, profile your products, your solutions, your services, but also really to ha have that human connection that we, you know, that we are still working at regaining after uh, the pandemic. Uh, we're just now starting to see, you know, mm -hmm. signs of, of, of people wanting to come back to work and missing that human connection. So Hub 350 is that meeting place. It's fantastic that you give me that segue into the pandemic topic because it's something that I definitely want to bring up, uh, especially from the Canada North perspective. Uh, a lot of those organizations used to do the work from home. Some of them have been sort of off-site for quite some time. How do you feel it affected the members of your community? It's, it's a difficult question to, to answer. Uh, certainly, we know that the pandemic has changed a number of, of principles or rules of the game. The first one is obviously talent is so, so critical for the park. And one of the challenges that we've seen is the pandemic brought about this, what I call this disconnection between where you live and where you work. And so the, the race for talent, which is global and it gets more competitive every day, really uh, has kind of driven a significant change in the way companies have hired uh, and the way companies see uh, attraction and retention of talent. So that uh, has been kind of a, a game changer. But what we've seen over the last year, uh, maybe year and a half, is that People who are working mostly from home uh, are now being uh, kind of convinced that, you know, coming into the office and connecting with my peers, with those that I don't see very often, having learning events uh, has really started to crystallize the need for that human cohesion or that social cohesion that mm -hmm. we've kind of we kind of lost uh, for the first two years during the pandemic. Uh, and so what the Canada North Business Association is trying to do is, is to really build events, activities that help bring people back to the park regularly. So one example is we do Wellness Wednesdays where we have a yoga instructor and people actually come in to work on those Wellness Wednesdays because of the Wellness uh, Wednesday activity and, and the yoga. Uh, so you know, we talk about the tech companies. We've got over 400 of the 540 members, but we also have 140 members who are retail, specialty retail, hospitality, health and wellness who are there and they depend on you know, the employees to come back to the park. And so Part of our focus around building community is making sure that the, that we provide opportunities for people to come back to the park and that they can be uh, patrons of the 140 small businesses that, mm -hmm. that operate in the park to help support the ecosystem and the community we have. Absolutely. And one of the 
things that I wanted to uh, check in with you as well, too. You've been a part of Canada North for the better part of 10 years or so, since the inception almost. Tell me a little bit more about the difficulties and the challenges that you guys faced over the years. Yeah, so I can, I've actually been with the Canada North technology community now for five years. So when we started our, our campus at the University of Ottawa in Canada North is really where I got my my introduction to the Canada North Technology Park. I would known it, uh, you know, for many, many decades, but to, 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 to live, breathe and be there on a, on a regular basis, I, I typically spend two and a half days a week uh, in Canada North. You know, part of the challenges that we faced as as a university coming into uh, to the park was, are you here to ask us for money? Are you here to find ways to get to some intellectual property or to get some insights into what's happened in terms of the latest and greatest development around technology to bring back to the campus? And the answer is yes. So underlying that is really what I'd call a, you know, what are you here for challenge. It was very clear from the start that we were here to to be part of a community. You know, every large technology, successful technology park in the world, whether it's in Palo Alto or, or Silicon Valley or Kendall Square in Boston or Israel or Singapore, they have three legs. They have industry, they have academia, and they have financing or, or venture capitalists. And so what was one of the missing ingredients in the technology park in Canada North was the presence of post-secondary institutions and academic institutions. So we took the jump in 2018 and uh, we had to demonstrate that we were there for the betterment of the park and not just to occupy space or to or, or to kind of you know be a, a tenant in in the park and so we you know it took us about a year to uh, to convince people that you know we were really there uh, for good reasons and for reasons of of building and connecting with the with the local ecosystem and so you know 5 years later been on the board for 5 years blessed privileged and humbled by the uh, opportunity to be the chair of the board. Uh, you talked about uh, Minister Jenna Suds a little earlier. She was the founding executive director of the Canada North Business yep. Association and uh, wears uh, her uh, affiliation with the KNBA very proudly on her uh, on her chest. And so she, uh, uh, you know, is a strong champion for technology and for Canada North uh, around the cabinet table. We also had Jamie Petten, who was uh, our previous executive director, same thing, who was a visionary who led the the development of the dream of Hub 350. And so who we are today is really a testament to uh, previous board chairs, but also to our two uh, mm -hmm. previous executive directors. And what would you say like the biggest contribution the University of Ottawa has been able to do for the park? So that's that's a really good question. So I'll, I'll give you two tidbits. One, uh, when we when the university joined the park in, 20, in late 2018, all I kept hearing was that, oh, there are more Waterloo co-op students uh, in the technology park in Canada North than U of Ottawa students. And I said, bullshit. And I said, let's get some numbers. And so, in fact, we found out that uh, that wasn't the case. The University of Ottawa in 2018 had about 230 students co-op uh, placements every year. Mm -hmm. Well, five years forward, uh, we've doubled that number and we're going this year because of the strong economic headwinds. A lot of companies have kind of scaled back on their co-op numbers, but we are at about 470. So we've doubled the number of co-op placements in the park in uh, within five years. So that's that's an, that's one example of the added benefit of being uh, on the ground talking to companies person to person. Uh, the second one is in 2020, we inaugurated the first ever academic industry research lab in the park on smart connected vehicles. And so that establishing that lab in the park was a first. And it was a, a, a scary experiment because we weren't sure how the reaction would be. And uh, four years later, we've went from having two partners in the park with the Smart Connected Vehicle Innovation Center Lab to having close to 20. Wow. And so again, along with that research lab, there are 15 to 20 students who spend every single day uh, doing their master's, PhD, or postdoctoral work uh, in the park. So that's never happened before. And you know, those students now understand and have a much richer and different experience than students who might be on a university campus when you're immersed in the middle of a of a technology park, and our you know our campus uh, in Canada North is really a showcase. So we 
regularly host international delegations. We have uh, foreign ministers, we have ministers, both uh, the provincial and federal level who come by and, and visit the park. And so it really is a showcase of collaboration. And so that's really what, what we've demonstrated since we joined the park in 2018. So Carleton University is also now in the park and is a tenant in Hub 350 space. Uh, Algonquin and La Cité Collégiale, the other local uh, post-secondary institutions, are also regular presence in uh, in the park. But Queen University, University of Toronto, McGill, uh, a lot of Waterloo, a lot of other uh, major uh, research uh, universities are also spending more time in the park because that's where a number of our graduates are actually uh, spending their time. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, in Canada North, there's about 5,000 U Ottawa alumni who live in Canada North. So that's a significant number. And so uh, the ties are there and presence in the park is really just a, a, a physical, tangible demonstration that these connections uh lead to really good collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. And earlier you, you mentioned that, you know, any sort of business park would require to have those three-legged. One of them was the academia. Tell me why you feel like that's a strong hold or a strong opinion. Well, you know, we talk a lot about knowledge transfer or, or knowledge translation. And so uh, the reason why uh, academia are part of very successful technology park is because we talk about innovation and, and it's an often overused word. I mean, the word is in my title, but there's innovation with a small I and innovation with a big I. What happens happens at universities is mostly small I innovation. Lots of discovery, lots of new knowledge developed, uh, and in many cases, a lot of promising technologies that move towards commercialization. Uh, so there is some, you know, in fact, a lot of, of, of commercialization and intellectual property that gets developed within, within universities and, and you know, uh, post-secondary institutions. But big I innovation happens in the park every day. So the 400 plus technology companies, if they don't innovate, they can't, uh, you know, they're not going to prosper and they're not going to survive. So, so big I innovation is really uh, what drives them every single day. So anytime you can put an institution that focuses maybe a little bit more on the small I, organizations and companies that focus on the big I, a lot of good things happen. And the good things that happen is really through students, whether they're at their undergraduate level or their uh, master's or PhD students or even postdoctoral fellows. They really are the glue that bring academia and industry together. So through internships that uh, that we have, so in the park we have, you know, there are several hundred inter- industrial internships that, uh, that happen uh, across all post-secondary institutions. And so they really help drive translation between what happens in the academic world and what happens in the industrial world. And what it does is that that's the glue that binds then the researchers, academic researchers, with those who are uh, tasked with R&D, technology commercialization deployment Mm -hmm. uh, in the park every day. So that really, for me, is where it starts. And that's why talent is always at the heart of you know, the mandate of the university, but also it's the fundamental pillar for the Canada North Technology Park. Absolutely. Really cool. Um, Really appreciate you being on and putting the time with us here. Um, It's been a pleasure to have you. And again, you're kind of driving that same crusade that we have for our show, which is making sure that when people think of Ottawa, they don't think it's a boring city. I've been hearing that term and it's kind of grinding my gears. And it's one of the reasons why I started the podcast in the first place is to make sure that we bringing awareness to the city, showing that it's, it's a fantastic city to live in. It's a fantastic city to move in uh, and continue to flourish. And specifically speaking around the technology park, because I mean, my whole show is about Canada on the rocks. Right. Uh, so really appreciate it uh, again here again. And uh, looking forward to the episode coming out and, and seeing that. What I wanted to do is for, for the audience to let them know that, hey, look, if you love this kind of content, please don't for, forget to hit the like button and subscribe. So you can get more and more of these episodes. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll be alerted every time a new episode comes out and you'll know so many things about this fantastic city and so many things about the fantastic businesses that are happening here within, right under your nose here in the city of Ottawa. Guy, thanks again. Really appreciate it. And looking forward to uh, meeting Ben and the rest of the team. Great. Thanks, Fatty. It was a pleasure. Appreciate you and the invitation. Thanks. Thank you. 